Moving forward with Blender, you're going to want to use the new Vulkan option instead of OpenGL. We're going to go over this in just a minute or two, and I'll show you guys a performance demonstration so you can see for yourself what you think about Vulkan in the viewport and how it draws the UI. The first thing you're going to want to do is come over to the Blender.org website go ahead and grab a Blender 4.5 LTS, whether it is Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm sorry, Mac, Intel, you're gonna be losing all future support. This will be your last release with Blender 4.5 LTS. Now there's some huge breaking changes coming up. I'm gonna go ahead and do a comparison for you guys on a couple of things. Now this is 4.4.3 latest release and this is 4.5 beta now for the immediate test we're gonna do I applied a modifier rotation a redraw timer with a script to test OpenGL versus Vulkan and frame rates we're gonna see which one tests better in a heavier environment all right what we're looking at here is gonna be frame redraw times in milliseconds that's gonna be printed on the system console during a viewport benchmark script that is running in the background and each line in blender is reporting how long it took to draw and swap the screen or rather refresh the viewport and we're going to do that with subdivision modifier on the suzanne and get an idea so you know what you're seeing here is it's basically telling us how long each frame takes to render in the viewport using vulcan versus not and this is actually pretty good over here. This is uh, the test in 443 Blender. And then of course I will test it live here. And then we will test it over here for the system console in 4.5 moving forward. Now let's get down to business here. Uh, I already ran the script, but let's just do a quick little test here. I've got wireframe on, I'm gonna hit control five and we'll do a subsurf. Definitely pretty cool. And while this is going, I want to rotate this. So what you can do is just pull out a little timeline here, switch this up, get this a little bigger, maybe get rid of some of that stuff. Okay, good. So now what I want to do is just hit I, and I want to rotate this somewhere around the, uh, let's just do 50 frames. And I'll just rotate this on the Z at 360. Place it and press I again. So now we'll have this turn and we can do the thing. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and press play. And as that's going, I'm gonna run this script. It's gonna pause kind of what's going on a little bit. And I did get outside. Let's do that again, because I got outside of where it needs to be. Gotta try to hit the uh, space bar or something here. Let's make sure that my key map is saying that I want to play the space bar. There we go. So that's going to be a little easier for me. I'll just press the space bar and I'll run this script right in the middle of that. And then we'll get a report here in just a second. And now we'll see in milliseconds, the frames 55 uh, overall. And so it's a little bit lower when it's running and we'll do everything exactly the same in 4.5 and the uh, milliseconds here definitely went a little higher and was not totally consistent. So no big deal. It's gonna come back over here and now we can do the same thing. Go ahead and hit control five. We've got a nice sub surf on there. Let's pull out this timeline here as well. And what we wanna do is just get back to frame one here, the eye, and then I'm gonna pull this out to frame 50. We did the same thing we did before rotate this on the Z at 360 and just hit enter and I again so that's good and I've got the exact same script here everything's gonna work so I'll go back and probably get the same setup here because I like search for that I don't like play for my space bar because I don't play the timeline much so just get the play button here ready I'm gonna hit play and run the script and it's gonna do the thing for us and it's testing testing Go ahead and pause that now let's look at those results and now we can see a side-by-side -side comparison here 
and let me go ahead and just break this down for you guys so here's the Vulcan test running exactly the same frame rate uh, where the geometry is densest during rotation right around 25 and we see the redraw around 30 milliseconds which gives us a frame rate of about 32.6 uh, which is not good for Vulcan but that's okay and we actually see that is slower right now than OpenGPL, which managed a clean 60 FPS at 16.6 milliseconds per frame. This tells us that while Vulkan is still in development, it might not outperform OpenGL in every case, especially with heavy modifier stacks like subdivision services at level five. My con Definitely Vulkan still offers other advancements like shader compilations, GPU, uh, future GPU scheduling with multi-threading geometry nodes, things like that. But for now, OpenGL still holding a strong first place with more of a raw viewport performance on this particular setup. All right, let's get started. I've got an empty here for the node group that's controlling the cracks. And you'll see once this scales up, it will crack the mesh. And we're going to have the exact same thing over here gonna crack the mesh. So what we want to do is come over and watch the frames here as I press play on the timeline. Go ahead and press play. We're started at nine. Excuse me, started at 20 and it jumped down to nine really quick and around 60 just losing a lot of performance. Let's go back. Yeah so it's under under nine there a lot. It's really struggling in the viewport. You can see that it's actually kind of struggling. Let's do that one more time. And you kind of see how this is going. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely struggling with the OpenGL to do that. Now let's go ahead and reset this one and I'll come over here, remove the UI and I'll press play. Watch this. I'll say it's a lot more consistent already. It's shot down to eight, but shot back up to nine. That's good. That's actually really good. I think this is a little bit better, not by a lot, but it's definitely better. So the viewport performance, I think overall, is gonna be better, especially while that's actually cracking the mesh. That's really good. So let's try hitting the plate over here and let's go ahead and move the viewport. And you can see this one's definitely chopping up on me as I'm trying to move things around. It's not terrible, but it's definitely a little bit slower. And one more time here, go ahead and press play. And that viewport is moving a lot faster. So yeah, the viewport performance I can say for this very basic test is definitely better. All right, now as promised, let's go with on the left, open GL. And let's go ahead and close that 443. All the settings are gonna be the exact same here. It's the same file, I basically just saved it and opened it in 4.5. And don't forget, you've got a juggle to put Blender 5. Uh, it'll Blender 4.5 will open 5, okay? But you cannot open any other Blender in 5. Moving forward, the structure is totally changed. Um, we'll go over that as well too. So go ahead and hit play. We're gonna give this one cycle through the timeline because it's kind of how you got to do it in Blender. Just let it do it, even though this has been baked. And then we'll take a look at this. I think the frames just dropped to 23 there. That's not terrible. 20, 22. It's kind of chopping up just a touch. Okay, so that doesn't really look great. No big deal. Let's allocate our resources over here. This is Vulcan with my NVIDIA GeForce 3060. And let's go ahead and press play. Now we'll let this cycle one time. And I gotta say that already looks a lot better. The timeline is jamming around 24, 25, 27. Okay, so that's much higher. It did jump to 22 for one second, but that's nothing compared to how slow it was over in 443. That's a lot better. And credit to Thomas Marcos for fixing the random walk black lines. This is a before you can see where the arrows are pointing. And then we will look at the after and do a quick comparison. What a big difference this makes. 
you know, in final renders. So now this is after, and you can see all of that is gone and corrected. Here's before. Take a look at that. Looks like it got punched and after. So that's a huge update for the random walk shader. Now on another note, as far as renders go, there's been another change, which is a feature that is deprecated, it's gone. So now if you were to come over here to world and we wanted to go and throw in the top sky texture, go ahead and throw this in here, you will see that the, I can't even pronounce it, the Hosaki Wilkins and uh, the Prithium are gone. Those aren't there anymore. You'll have the Nietzsche sky, which is fine. And if we go ahead and just type in sky texture here as it would go and you would want to plug this in uh, to world, obviously you wouldn't want that over here, uh, but here we go. So now you would have the Nishta only moving forward in Blender 5. That one is gone. I'm a little sad. I know it's outdated and they weren't photorealistic, but they did provide some cool effects. So bye bye to that. All right, I switched things up on you guys. Now, what we've got is the compositor open in 5.0 alpha and 4.5 beta LTS. What do you notice? There's gonna be a little bit of a difference here. When we went to click nodes, uh, this was kind of standalone. This wasn't really transferable. Now we have something that is actually aligned with geometry nodes and looks the same. When we click new nodes we get that now in the compositor guess what now we've got the same setup and look at this you'll have compositor excuse me compositor node trees that's going to make a lot of people happy when they're building add-ons especially me and i might even add something to the evb add-on something i was offering on my gum road a while back it was cool it was when the uh, bloom was going away and we had EV bloom just disappear, right? So now instead of the used nodes with this little checkbox, you're gonna have this set up. I think it's gonna be much better. Now the compositing node rotate also got a change and it's not gonna say degree, it's now gonna say angle for that socket. Now this next change is interface related, but it's going to impact your workflow, I think in a really good way. Edit preferences, let's go to themes, go to user interface, let's come on down to tab. Now I've already done a slight change. I don't know if you can notice it or not, but you will now. Now you have a unified uh, operator behind the scenes changing the theme everywhere in all tabs, all windows. So now this can be changed. I kind of like this slight highlight right here. It's kind of, uh, it just, I think it's a little bit better on the eyes to have a little bit of a separation between each one of these and not just one big extra block, even though they were individual tabs, definitely beforehand, if you have it like this, it, you can't see it. And now with just a little bit of separation right there, it's actually easier on the eyes. And now for the selected, you can actually just change that, maybe just a little bit brighter, maybe a little blue and whatever is actually selected, you'll know exactly which workspace you're in, and that's gonna be great. Oh yeah, and another cool thing uh, you'll be able to actually do now that I'm in the UV editing space, and go ahead and throw in a little Susie here, and you'll notice that I am able to select the object and see a UV map overlay. The active object will be the one on top. So if I select this, you'll see this one, and it's going to be by default moving forward in Blender 4.5 LTS. And it's actually, I think it came in at 4.3. Uh, not too many people notice probably, but this is definitely a neat game changer too, because now you'll be able to see those overlays very quickly. Now this is Blender 4.2. Not sure if you can see it, but the outline here, sometimes when you move the viewport, the color theme would match. We don't like that, never did and your panel would kind of get lost in translation. But moving forward, Blender 5 doesn't do that. It, by default, not a new setting. Uh, by default, in the Edit Preferences themes, you're gonna see that this now has an outline and you'll be able to see it. Let me just, if I can move this up so you can see the outline a little bit better. 
Uh, yeah, so now you don't lose it when you go to uh, this position here. Normally that would blend in as the same color, but now there's a distinct outline there, which is cool. And just for a user tip, control middle mouse, you can turn this into a 4K panel, move it up and down, and just hover the mouse over and press home to reset it back to its default size. And on another interface note, now you can snap the sidebar and just show tabs, which is cool because before it was like this, right? It was all or none, or maybe even, you know, you just kind of pulled out a little bit and you're like, I'm eh, just ghost the panel back a little, and then it would be hard to grab. So now this is gonna make a lot more sense and it's gonna come back automatically when you do that. Don't forget guys, you can always pin something to your uh, sidebar here. And then as you go down through tools, your transform's still here. We could just move this thing up and have a more efficient workflow. So if I go to view and I just need all of these to show, then they will. And of course you could just collapse them down if you're not using them and condense for space. Now let's finish up the compositor updates. Here is a list of new nodes for 4.5 LTS. We've got the add vector math. You've got rotate, mix, value mix, clamp, float curve, and black body. All great additions to the compositor. And of course, we now have the new image info. We have a new image coordinate as well. And an expected and long awaited update, the current node system that we have already for noise textures, including the checker, Gabor, gradient, magic, noise, Veroni wave, white noise, and of course my favorite, the brick texture. All these are now available in the compositor. And of course the advancements with the blur node, extremely important and very useful. Compositor node updates, socket support for Boolean sockets, clamp was added to the glare node, interpolation, the scale mode was changed, the denoise now supports GPU, interpolation was added to the corner pie node, and backdrop gizmos for the ellipse mask. And keeping suit with the current progress and direction, Blender is now exposing single values as inputs. This will allow you to have new combinations in the compositor like never before. And I'll let you guys go ahead and pause the video here and just read this over as some final updates to the compositor moving forward with Blender 4.5 LTS to 5. I appreciate everybody being here. And just a couple of honorable mentions here. One, the blur node with the fast Gaussian. It's a lot more accurate. This looks tremendous and it won't do some of that artifact style flickering that it was doing before. So now you've got a lot more to look forward to when you use the blur node. Now, if you'd like to jump over to Super Hive Market, formerly Blender Market, and support me, you'll find a number of different add ons here you can get. These will contribute to the Blender Development Fund. I've got things for reference software, preventing crashes, and IES add-ons, things that join with bevels and procedural cracks, along with some other cool tools down here. And my collaboration buddy Sam and I have put together a number of powerful add-ons to supercharge your workflow. And of course, over here at Sam's page, you'll take a look at some powerful add-ons like GIF Maker. You can make loop animations in Blender in just a few clicks. Stack Animation, which just came out, which is a really powerful add-on for adding a whole lot of different animations very, very quickly. These things are great. There's a tutorial here. Even a beginner can use this. He's got another bunch of add-ons that are generating rooms. Key capture, which is extremely exhaustive. It's very good. It captures everything, all the data output. Very, very useful, especially for development when you're trying to key things in. Collection compactor, the maze maker. We already talked about gift maker. Text theme editor, which is pretty cool. And then the to-do add-on, which is probably one of my favorites. And this one is going to have a Kanban style or a listing style to it. Very cool. Thank you for watching, guys. And I'll see you all in the next tutorial update for Blender as we move forward. Blender 5 is the next anticipated release and I'll see you guys there.